TGIF, thank God it's fish. And thank God it's Friday. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusted and trusted reporter. 34 years on the Cowboys, 40 years on the NFL. This is an Emmy Award winning kind of show. And this is Ed Tuttle Jones's autographed jersey, which can and will be somebody's. We said when we got to 70,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation here on the Fish Report, subscribers, that is to say, uh, that number continues to grow, by the way, and I appreciate that uh, of you. More on that in a minute that we'd give away a uh, incredibly valuable prize. And there she blows, Ed Tuttle Jones, one of your favorite Cowboys of all time. Uh, underrated, which is hard to do when you look like him and, and when you play like him. So uh, we're going to do this over the course of the weekend. And by the way, we'll give away more prizes next week too out of the Uncle Fish prize closet. The Uncle Fish store link is below, by the way. So we're going to start. Uh, you must be a subscriber to win too tall. And we ask that whether you do it live, you don't have to be present to win when we hand out the winner Monday. When will you do it live or whether you do it over the course of the weekend in the chat below, type in too tall and the state or country in which you live. And Marsha will throw a dart and pick a winner. Our condolences to uh, Paul Gale's family. And again, we, we uh, talk about this all too often, frankly. Uh, glad to do it, but sad to do it. Uh, a a death in the family, a struggle in the family, um, ups and downs that we all go through, and uh, we're all here for each other. And that's one of the coolest things about what you guys have done for all of us. Fish at six tonight. Uh, and yes, we got a Micah thing. We're going to touch on it briefly. We got a DAC thing. We're going to touch on it briefly. But I want to dig into the lure. That's a fishing fish term. The allure, either way, of the Cowboys. It happens to me, not only on this show, it happens to me in my real life. I'm walking down the street, I'm going into the grocery store, going into the saloon, or I mean restaurant, and it, it happens every day, <clears throat> multiple times every day. Fish, what are my Cowboys doing? I don't know if I can stomach any more of this. It's been too long. It's too painful. It's too arduous. I wish we could do so. I, I, oh, and one more thing. And sometimes it's, um, I'm 29, so I've never seen the Cowboys win big. And even more than that, it's, Chris, I've been a Cowboy fan since 1961. Right? My grandparents had see uh, that. I get it all the time, and you guys know what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. Because it's you guys. I don't know if I can do this. And I don't sense that you are really jumping off the bandwagon. I sense your anger and I sense your angst more than I sense your um apathy. That's all the A words I know. Um, our readership at our Cowboys website, CowboysCountry.com, Cowboys space SI, if you're looking for it. Same as always, no negative change there. Our subscriptions and viewers and likes here, same as always, no change there. It's all good. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I dismiss your anger and your angst, nor does it mean that the Cowboys should admit uh, dismiss your anger, your angst, or your potential apathy. I'm going to take you back before we get to our top 10. And this is 1989. So long ago, um, in many ways, that I bet you you've forgotten about this. I'm going to remind you, and maybe somebody needs to remind Jerry. 19, uh, it was 1989, then 1990. I'd never quite seen anything like it. I covered the Broncos. I don't remember that happening. I covered the 49ers. I don't remember that happening. What would happen is by about Thursday of every week of a Cowboy home game in 1990, the league would be on the verge of saying, we're not going to telecast, broadcast this game beyond CBS. It's going to be blacked out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Diddly, diddly, dink, what? And so 
Jerry and his marketing sales staff arranged, I think it was Kroger, arranged with Kroger every week. Hey, if we're a little short, we haven't sold all the Texas, Texas Stadium because you have to have a sellout in order to have the blackout lifted in 1990. You guys remember what I'm talking about? And so Jerry and the Cowboys arranged for Kroger to buy the unsold tickets. And then, as I recall, I don't know if Kroger then gave them away to kids or sold them for a dollar, but Kroger bought the tickets. And so the Cowboys had a sellout, and so the game could be on TV. Is not shockingly brilliant on the part of Jerry and his, and probably George Hayes, and the marketing team. is brilliant. They got their sellout. So you got to see the Cowboys on TV. So they became part of your viewing pleasure. And by 1990, a little bit more pleasurable. 1991, a little bit more pleasurable. Uh, arguably the fastest turnaround from terrible to incredible in NFL history. Thus the name of Jimmy's book, Turning the Thing Around. There it is right up there. So they got their sellouts because they got a grocery store to buy the tickets. And by the way, uh, another smart part of the genius, I bet, that allowed a lot of kids to get into the games in 1990, right? A lot of 10-year-olds got to go to those games in 1990. And I'm not very good at math, but those 10-year-olds in 1990 are now <laughs> 45? They're you. You're now a 45-year-old Cowboy fan that got turned on to them in part because you went to the game. Cheap and or got to see them on TV when they almost got blacked out. Talk to Sully, open up your wallets more in 2024 with increased prices. It's true. The Cowboys, at least in some sections, are raising ticket prices. I've seen 10% increases. I've seen 14% increases. I get it. Max, let Kroger buy the tickets this season. I get it. But the number of fans that really, really quit, and I'm not telling you not to, you do whatever you want. That your decision to say, you know what, I'm done. I'm gonna become a Chiefs fan. I'm gonna start watching more hockey. Uh, I think I'll go hug the wife and kids a little bit more and sweep out the garage. That's, that's between you, Jerry, and your God. What I'm telling you is part of what George Watson is writing. I have too much history with the Cowboys. I'm not going anywhere. Now, I don't, not everybody's going to necessarily agree with the fans of the Browns. I mean, it's true. If you're a Browns fan, you would trade places and, and, and get to say it. it's true. Unless you're a Browns fan who's 100 years old, then you go, no, we got a history too around here. Here's why we almost always come back. A.V. Clark, Kroger's going through a merger. Well, you're missing, I mean, A.V., I love you. You're missing the point. The point is, if to those people who said, let's just quit buying tickets, that'll show him, maybe, unless Jerry just goes and gets Nike, Dr. Pepper, Bank of America to buy the tickets, you see. Let's not buy any more t-shirts. Eh. Drop in the bucket. Let's really, really not be fans anymore. Cindy, 105.3, the fan is putting out negative stories about Micah. False, and I'll get to it. Close, Cindy, love you. One of my 70,000 best friends. Don't be jealous, Marshy. Don't be jealous. 
Marshy. 105.3 The Fan is not putting out negative stories about Micah. I'm going to fix that for you, and we're going to work together on it. Stay tuned. I, I don't think you're going to quit. You can, and I'm not telling you not to. I'm not questioning your right to. Derek, we should wear brown paper bags at the games. Hard to do for a 12 and 5 team, which is what they are today, but I, I get your point. Here's the top 10 reasons that, as Michael Corleone said in The Godfather 2, well, you see the thumbnail. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. And in the case of Godfather 2, he was trying to go legit. They moved the family to Las Vegas. They're going to they're, they're, they're gonna get into politics in Nevada and be legit. And they're going to run casinos, legit. Every time I try to... I think that's us. I think that's you. Oh, Birdman, was that Godfather 3? Thank gosh. I got somebody smarter than me around here. Now, is that, was it Godfather 3? Okay, thanks, Birdman. I believe you. Here's the top 10 lures. Why we stay. And I will get into the DAP thing today, and I will get into the Micah thing today. Touching on it. Yeah, and Kevin McCarthy, Fish, it sounds like you're challenging us. Yeah, I know. Let, let me make this very clear. I am not telling you not to. I'm telling you, 99% of us won't. Kenneth Easley, $10 pitch in another refund. I'm still stuck on the idea from the other show you did, Fish, about Jerry not allowing the Chiefs to come to Dallas. How do ticket prices work between the Jets and Giants and Chargers Rams? Well, the... Jets and the Giants, first of all, split a territory that's a little bigger than Dallas-Fort Worth, but also they, they were already there and then they merged, remember? And the Chargers, of course, were in San Diego and that, that's only 90 miles down. So that, that was a merger. This is a little different. They're, the Chiefs are going to settle their issues in Kansas City. That would be a smart prediction. Derek. Let's wear brown paper bags over our heads. That'll fix them. But it, but it won't. But it won't, though. And you're going to wear a brown paper bag while you're winning? You don't know yet that you're not winning. D.B. Cooper, who's going to keep his allegiance and his Uncle Fish star. Hey, how do I get to Circle and Star? Ask the fellows. I'll show you how. Nobody's forcing any of you to stay. And I'm not forcing anybody to stay or leave. I'm going to offer up what I think is... Uh, uh, an intellectual level top 10 reasons why they pull us back in. Number one, it's in your DNA. Ed Quinn with a great point. Ed's one of our 70,000 smartest guys. You want to put brown paper bags on your head? Fine. Jerry will sell you a brown paper bag with a cowboy logo on it. Steve Burks, is this going to be a fish classroom? Yes, it is. It's in your DNA. It's like saying, I'm not going to have gray hair anymore. Well, wait a minute. When I get white hair, I do do something about it. So you can do some free. That's a bad example. My white, uh, white side hairs, that's a bad example. Erase it. Diddly diddly dink. Erase that one. Go back. It's in your DNA. You sat down on your daddy's knee when you were five years old and you watched the Cowboys game. Your very first Christmas when you were six-year-old, your daddy gave you a Cowboy plastic helmet. When you were seven-year-old, he gave you a football. When you were eight-year-old, he signed you up for flag football and you had to play for the Giants and you cried because you wanted to be on the Cowboys. You went out in the backyard at halftime of the Cowboys game. You sat glued to the TV with your dad. 
then at halftime, went out in the backyard with your dad or your brothers or your sister or your friends, and you played football and you pretended you were Eddie LeBaron, Don Meredith, Craig Morton, Roger Staubach, Danny White, Troy Aikman, Jason Garrett, Quincy Carter, Tony Romo, Dak Prescott. Cue ball. You're right, Fish. I bleed it. I bleed silver and blue. It's in your DNA. You can't quit your DNA. The warm fuzzies? Just, just in there. The, the number of Cowboy fans that I know... And this includes many, 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 many of you. There's some of you who have a tear in your eye right now because you're thinking of your granddaddy who took you to your first Cowboy game. Curtis B, Cowboys, last three years, 36 and 15. Let's slow down on the paper bags. You're, you're not wrong. In my, that's my opinion. I recognize this is I recognize this is a painful off season. They're not getting they're not getting done what you wanted to get done, and uh, you're frustrated not only with that, you're also frustrated by the reasons why. Uh, if you can divorce, Kevin says, if you can divorce your exes, you can divorce the Cowboys. You can, but your but your wife is not in your DNA. Your DNA might be in her. What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> your, your wife's DNA is not in you. This is more like divorcing your child. You can, but you don't. Big Buck, you think we have it bad trying to be a Browns fan or a Panthers fan? It's true. But we've established that Cowboys fans, I've established, you hate this, you're spoiled. And, and that's part of your DNA too. <laughs> Item two, Mother Earth, the calendar. It used to be in this country, baseball. The rights of spring, boys of summer, Mr. October, hot stove league. If you don't know what the hot stove league is, ask your grandpappy, he'll explain it to you. Kevin, you want you're you're comparing the Panthers front office to Kevin. Kevin, don't make me pull you up to the front of the class and stand in front of everybody else in front of the class and say that facing the class. I don't want to have to send you to the principal's office with urine running down your pant leg. The Mother Earth calendar. It's just it's it's just part of your life now. You know when free agency opens, you know when the draft is, you know when OTAs are, when the schedule comes out. It's one of the biggest stories we write all year. One of the most popular stories we write all year is when the schedule comes out. You know when training camp opens. And you make a pil pilgrimage there if you can. It's it's in your mother earth calendar. Item three, speaking of training camp. By the way, if you want to win the Ed Jones, Tutal Jones autographed jersey, that's the real deal. Uh, type in your name and the state in which you live. And, and you can do this all weekend long. You can do it in the chat below as well. If you're not live, Marshall will pick a winner on Monday night. The way I, item three, the way I've put it about training camp, especially in Oxnard, my line, the sky is blue, the ocean's green, the sand is warm, the sun is yellow, the grass is fresh, the halter tops are white, the beer is cold, and it's so seductive. For a decade, 
Broadus and I stood on that sideline and we would talk about that guy looks good. I brought us his one, brought us his biggest one, uh, third round defensive lineman. Um, was it Collins? Not YL, but um, he's that's a Pro Bowl player. And like, this is brought us, and he's a scout, and he knows what he's talking about. And then he became a good player. Now he's in, uh, well, Malik, right? Now he's in Houston, and he's good. And the more we talked about it over the years, the more we realized, in my opinion, our our opinions of cowboy players was being impacted by the sun and the beer and the halter tops and the ocean. We were being seduced. That is part of the allure. These are the 10 cowboy lures. Why I don't think ultimately you're going anywhere. By the way, a sidebar to this, they're, they're going to win again someday, maybe this year, at which point we'll all come running back. Item four, it's a hell of a sport, isn't it? By God, it's brutal. And it's violent. And we like that. I've never seen the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling, and uh, I'm watching it tonight. And I'm told that it's really good. Uh, of course, it has Albert Einstein Brooks as the bad guy, I, and, and and he's he's my guy. Um, and, and, and but I'm told, watch out, because it is it's brutal. Okay, I'm like, okay, let's go. It's brutal and it's violent and it's beautiful and it's graceful. And you know what else it is? And I don't throw around this term lightly. I know what I'm saying and I hope you do too. It's war-like. Football is like a sports war. Baseball is not like that. Hockey and eh, basketball is not like that. Tennis, golf, no, 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 no. It's war-like. The, the, the phrases we use, George Carlin act, the phrases we use to describe things are phrases from war. It's territorial. It's incredible. Baseball's too slow. Right? That I mean, that's why football overtook baseball. It's violent, it's brutal, it's beautiful, it's graceful, and it's sports war. <laughs> Item five, it's a rectangle. This is completely by accident. For all they knew when they were inventing football, they could have made it a circular field. Well, I, I don't know. RHL, Albert Brooks and Drive is one of the best bad guys ever. I'm, I'm fired up. It's a rectangle accidentally made for TV. You ever watched horse racing? Yeah, now let's go back 20 years. You ever watched horse racing on TV? Hey, here they are. And so this camera here, and they're, and they're, and they're off. And then you see them right here. And then they go around and you see the horse's butts. And then the ca same camera picks them up and they're back here. And now they're just a bunch of little brown dots. You can't watch horse racing on TV. Can't see anything. Hockey. I can't see the puck. Football fits your TV screen. <laughs> Item six, the sense of community celebration and the sense of community mourning. Way before there was football or TV. We had birth, birthdays, weddings, funerals. We, we, we gathered. In Texas, not just in Texas, but in Texas in particular, famously, all these little towns in Texas, what do they got? They got a gas station. They got 
a bar and grill. And they got a little high school football team. And the, the communities, and they have a church, and the communities bonding is all around the football team, Friday night, Friday night lights, of course. Now, now they have a Walmart, Steve Burks points out. Yes, they do. If we didn't have high school football in all these little towns for the last 70 years, we would have come to something else. There'd be rodeo or a high school band contest or a church social. And of course there were those things. And then football took them all over. We, we need something. We need something. We need, um, we don't just need to use a religious parallel. We don't just need faith, which is in here. I don't want to get too deep on you. A lot of us need religion. Faith, you can do all by yourself. Religion, we got to do it in a building. And that's what football has become. It, it is a sacrilegious religion. <laughs> Item seven. Hey, how's the weather? For me, the, what's the most talked about when, you, when I call Uncle Bob up in uh, Minnesota? It, invariably. I ask him, how's his weather? He asks me, how's my weather? I ask him, how about the Vikings? He asks me about the Cowboys. What the hell else would we talk about? And you do this too, right? I don't want to hear about your golf shot. Oh boy. The flute cart wants to tell me, man, I'll tell you, you should see me on the seventh green today. I almost had, what do you mean I almost had a hole in one? There's no, that's not a story. Shogun Oba wants to tell me about that time he was in seventh grade and almost made out with a head cheerleader. I don't know, what, what, what almost? Doesn't count as anything. Henry Gonzalez, Uncle Fish Premium, wants to tell me about his fantasy football team. No, I got a real football team. I don't care about your fantasy. Boy, we almost, we lost by three this way. I don't care. But we need something real to talk about. Over the picket fence. How's the weather? How's the Cowboys? You probably have somebody in your family could be of could be a, of the female persuasion, not necessarily. Kenneth Beasley, sidebar. I really I appreciate that. Kenneth Kenneth comments, Uncle Fish Premium, by the way, about the talking heads versus the way we do it here. Guys, I, I mean I can do a I can do a Dak Prescott. We do plenty of Dak Prescott shows. We can do that all day. I could do a I could do it morning, noon, and night. Like the TV networks do. I like to do this too. Uh, and I appreciate you being, if you're kind of new here, you're going, where's the DAC news? Where's the, well, we'll I'll tuck it in here. And we'll have much more on it uh, on Monday, on both of those things. For the uninitiated football fan, I like to suggest to them one way to get into it, if you're interested, is to recognize that it's a soap opera. Stink Floyd, Fisher, you all in every day till there's a tag on my toe. It's a soap opera. And we don't necessarily like what happens to Ellen Quartermain, that's all I can think of. Who I don't know who's on a soap opera. I don't know. <laughs> General, I don't know. Uh, Luke and Laura. Oh, I didn't like that Luke and Laura situation. But people watched. Right now, I don't like that Dak and Micah situation. Gary B, it's a soap opera, more like a circus. A soap opera is like a circus. But then a soap opera is also a romance and a triumph and failure, and love, and hate, and conflict. It's all of it. It's a soap opera. 
the deck story, which I'll touch on here. Today's deck story is the telephone game. Craig Carton is on Fox Sports saying that he's aware of the buzz in Dallas of Dak's going to get traded to the Raiders for four picks. What? Josh Schaefer, the fish premium for 18 months. Fish, I always get my Dallas Cowboy scoop here. Here's going to be a nice little sampler for you. Thank you, John. Josh. So this is a national TV host saying he's hearing the buzz. There's smoke. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Dak to the Raiders for four picks. And then you're digging into his comments. He goes, that's the word on Dallas Sports Talk Radio. Er, no, it's not. What happened was, or as people say when, when they're on Judge Judy for reasons I don't understand, what had happened was, you don't have to say had. What happened was uh, a writer at the, the USA Today cowboy site said, if they were going to trade Dak, here's an idea. And then this writer said, if they were going to trade Dak, maybe they could call the Raiders. And I wonder if they could get this. Not dissimilar to what we did the other day when we said, what could you on this show? And you can also get this, cowboyscountry.com. If you really trade a Dak, what would you really get? That doesn't mean they're trading him. That means if what you could... I don't have any idea if somebody on Dallas radio mentioned the USA Today story. I assume they did. And Craig Carton on Fox Sports TV National misunderstands all this to think it's actually happening. Then there's the Micah. Now, this does have to do with Sports Talk Radio. My man, Sean Sharif, who does not make stuff up. Believe me, I've sat in the room with him for 10 years. Says, I'm going to paraphrase, that there's people in the building that if Micah wasn't here anymore, would kind of be happy about it because his act is wearing thin. What? And of course, uh, Cindy, you said it earlier, and I'm happy to, to guide you right. Now people are mad at Sean. You're mad at the wrong cat. The people that are doing a disservice here are the ones who are whispering things to the media about Micah. And the irony is this. The very people, and I'm, I'm, I'm in this club, Micah, focus. Focus on what matters. Your podcast doesn't matter. Focus on what matters. Michael Irvin told him that. Gronk told him that. He isn't listening. There's people in the building that are tired of his act. That's, don't dispute that. Sean's right. I guarantee he's right. The irony is that those people that are saying that to Sean Sharif, not Sean's fault, their fault, are doing the exact same thing they're accusing Micah of doing. Why aren't you guys focused on how to help the team? You think whispering to Sean Sharif of 105.3 The Fan that you kind of would be happy if Micah was out of here because you're tired of that? You think that helps? That's the irony. Your job, if you work for the Cowboys, is to help. Not to leak. The people, and, and I, I believe it's multiple people, the people who are saying this to Sean Sharif, probably the same people that told the Dallas Morning News were, were, were upset because it doesn't, like, doesn't seem like the front office is doing anything. Probably the same people. And I understand you're disgruntled. You want to be disgruntled with Jerry Jones? Take it up with the boss, whatever. But you want to be disgruntled with Michael Parsons? Help him. The in-house leaks. 
from the very same people, the very same Cowboys employees who wish Micah would just focus on winning are whispering things about Micah that in their actions hurt Dallas's chances of winning. The report from Sean is not bullshit. What's bullshit is the Cowboys in-house leaks about Micah. They are unfortunate, they are counterproductive, and they are potentially damaging. BD, this is negotiation through the media. Micah Parsons is not going to sign a, a cheaper contract because somebody in the building doesn't like him. It was ridiculous. Uh, but BD, if what you're saying is the Cowboys might have planted that because they think it'll impact negotiations, maybe. Micah Parsons is a $30 million a year player. No headline in a newspaper is going to change that. C.D. Lamb is a $30 million player, 28, 29, 30. No headline is going to change that. I'll go even beyond that. Rasheed Rice just almost killed 12 people. If Rasheed Rice in the next three years in his career wins a Super Bowl and goes to the Pro Bowl, Rasheed Rice will get paid $30 million unless he's in prison. Item eight, this is a baseball thing for sure, but when the Mavericks were for years were bad, it was certainly my approach to covering and being a Mavericks fan. Let's, let's see the development of this kid. It was fun to watch the development of a kid. So, so, and that's part of football too. If it turns out that the Cowboys this year aren't good, then most of us will, will, will shift gears and start going, well, listen, uh, it's, it's not a good year for the Cowboys, but look, they're, they're that third receiver, that Jason, uh, that uh, uh, Jalen Brooks looks like a player. Hey, look at TJ Bass. He's really developing. That's part of this. You don't get to be good every year. There's no reason that the Cowboys on paper shouldn't be good this year, except for what they're doing to themselves. You don't win the Super Bowl every year. But sometimes there's value in watching a team build. Item nine, the what if, the maybe, the hope. Oh, I know, hope is not a plan. But hope is a thing. Again, it, it's, it's in us. We can't help ourselves. So what if? Not every team that says, we're, we're a super team, ends up winning. Does it? Miami Heat. Does it? Philadelphia Eagles. Hope. Roger, you're not getting the message at all. Roger M., you're not understanding the message at all. I, I acknowledge your anger. If I can come through this screen, Roger, and come sit with you in your living room and give you a man, a manly hug, I would do it. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Hope. Now, if that's all you got, you ain't got much. Luckily, the Cowboys, the 2024 Cowboys, have more than that. But there's always that. And finally, item 10. Did you hear about this guy? And this is a good one, and this is a fun one. Giovanni Manu. That's his name. He's Canadian. He's 6'8". He's 350. He runs a 4940. And he's an offensive lineman. And he had a pro day. And a bunch of teams went up there and looked at him and said, Who's this? What, what is this? He's got a real vertical leap, 30 something. 
He's this massive, gigantic silo of a man. He's Tongan. And he can run and he can jump. And he's 6'8, 350. Giovanni Manu. He's uh, uh, big A. Wait a minute, he's from Canada and he's named Giovanni Manu. He's Tongan. Well, he made his first 30 visit. And guess who he visited? You, here, right there. So we do it for the stories. It's fun. It's not fun to lose playoff games. It's not fun to think you're going to the Super Bowl and not. It's not fun going one and 15. It's not. And then in the end, if you're a Cowboy fan and you're spoiled, it's not fun going 12-5, 12-5, 12-5 either. But by the time we get to these three items, can we agree that when it comes to being a Cowboy fan, uh, sometimes, much to your chagrin, just when you thought you were out, they pull you back in. <laughs> Ed Tutal Jones, autographed. Ask for it. You might just get it, but you must subscribe. Uh, go ahead and be generous to your friends and tell them as well. Marsha will throw a dart on Monday and we will have ourselves a winner. And more prizes next week as well. Fish out.